feed, water them, drag them around the country, buy base amps for them. Hello, Kev. Hey, Matt. How's it going? All right, mate. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to have a look at today is, um, are bands still relevant? Uh, where, are the, where are the new bands coming from? Where are the big, sort of lot, big, big bands coming through? So do you um, mean bands as a referred to, like solo artists and all that kind of well, stuff? I think there was this Maroon 5 article, I'm just going to bring it up, where um, they were saying, the guy was saying that, um, that uh, bands were no longer relevant and it's because in the charts um mostly it seems to be uh solo artists now yeah. there's a couple of reasons i can see for that is that um if you're a musician now bands are very expensive you have to rehearse yeah. them you have to feed water them drag them around the country buy bass amps for them and if you've just got a uh, you're an artist if i was a solo artist now with a laptop you know, that's a lot easier than dragging four by twelves into pubs. You know what, what was I mean? it? What was it? Fripp called it. Uh, oh, I can't remember. He, he had a oh, name. Oh, oh um, yes, organised unit or something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The point no. being, it, it definitely makes more sense. It's you know, really it's hard like, to keep a band going these days, isn't it? Even even like at the basic kind of amateur level, just getting four people into a room it, yeah. is just hard work man and especially in the last you know obviously with covid it's been a nightmare and also that um you know it's just, it's just not practical it's really hard to do and you can get a lot more done a lot more quickly and it probably sounds 90 percent as good just sat there with a laptop and, you know the, the, you know the quality yeah. of recording is incredible now you can get reason with a 300 quid pc and off you go yeah and that's true so you, you can get a breakout box and use it for live you know there's you, you know when live music does return but you know um most of the uh, like the acts in the top 40 and how relevant the top 40 is because everything's in a niche now but um you know there's, there's there's not many bands um within the top 40 no it's true i mean you've always got you know like metal the the metal genres and all that kind of stuff that's always going to be you know bands isn't it that's just by definition you yeah know. And, and and i love that you know obviously I'm, i grew up a metal kid so i love all the metal stuff you know and we, we all did didn't we me and you um yeah and we love the metal scene but i think if i was a young kid now i mean i would you be begging people to use the garage to rehearse in and buying all the gear and or would you be buying a laptop and just cracking on you know what I, mean? well, I suppose it's that isn't it is is the because for us, I mean, that was the process, wasn't it? You all brought an instrument, but because you couldn't play all the instruments, you got together in a band, and that's that's how exactly. that worked. But yeah. I guess now, if you've got a laptop, do you need to collaborate? Exactly, and you can do. We well, can just get stuff done. And you know, if I was a new artist now, say if I was 15, 16, starting a band, I'd be thinking about building my YouTube channel up. You know, yeah. instead of, instead of starting a band, I'd be, you know, think about building up my YouTube channel and. And correct, connecting with people on there because that's just the way the world is doing Twitch streams, doing yeah, uh, TikTok and all that. And it's not a world I'm into because that's, I'm not of that age, but you know, what I mean, I think if I was a young person, I'd do it now. So I think it's just changed, but I think there'll always be bands for people who are into bands, you know. What I mean, there's always you know, I think lots there's, um, of, you know, lots yeah. of festivals, art tangent, there's um, you know, all those sort of festivals where you know, there's people going to see bands. But there's yeah. a lot of, you know, most of the stuff that's coming out, I mean, um, Phoebe Bridges' album I liked. You remember that one? Uh, yeah, um, really good. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming out. It tends to be solo artists just because probably it's easier to get stuff done. Do you think that this is, I mean, yeah, there's obviously, you know, there's a lot of the technology that's driving it. But like you say, you say there, like Phoebe Bridges is, you know, I suppose in, in many respects is a bit more of a traditional kind of artist in that she's a, basically this singer songwriter kind of thing but do you think ben smith that's what she's i think she's yeah yeah it. exactly yeah. do you think that a lot of this as well is being driven by you know the um, the labels and stuff so you know for, i mean for a label to sign a solo artist he's going to be surely that's going to be more attractive yeah, financially cheaper. to them than it is to the you know sign a whole band it's cheaper it's easy to tour you don't have to take all the gear out on the road you can if you can tour with a laptop or an acoustic guitar or a loop pedal or 
you know, it's going to see if you've got just got a tour manager in a car with a with an artist yeah, yeah. or an artist driving themselves, or or even just hiring a band in, and you know, it's like that, you know, literally yeah, yeah, gig yeah, economy, yeah. isn't it? You're just paying them for that time that you're, you know, you're using them, and then the, you know exactly, they're off yeah. somewhere else. So, you know, there's no real logic to. I mean, do you remember when I used to do those acoustic solo gigs? I do. And I used to, I used to, to drive. Yeah, used to drive, or I used to get the train, and I was doing forty a year. Mm. because it's easy it's easy to, it's, it's easier to do that than to get the fierce and the dead to launch get a fierce and the dead gig go it's like to launch a shout so like you got all the families you got all the arrangements to sort out people's work people's yeah other stuff you know i mean we've got other things going on and, and it's whether we feel the show is appropriate so for to make a fierce and the dead gig in 2022 when we will be returned to live performance is is not an easy thing to do no it's not it's not but do you, you think well I think there's always going to be people, though. I mean, I know for for, for myself, you know, I I make music, you know, outside of the band as well. But you know, maybe it's just my perspective perception of it. I don't feel I, I'm not a solo artist. You know, I'm no, sure no, I might no, release no. something at some point, but I that's not me. I I there's grew a, up collaborating. You know, yeah, there's a, no, there's totally there's a magic to playing in the band. And we'll move on to the second part of this discussion. Is is um about how relevant the guitar is as an instrument as well, because yeah, I, I mean, I just see the guitar as a sound trigger. So you yeah. can use the guitar to trigger a synth. You, you can use the guitar to trigger uh, an ambient delay. And I can't see why that's any different to using a keyboard to trigger the same sound or, you know, it's just, a, it's just, a, it's, it's a sound, sound generator. generator. Sound generator. Yeah. So yeah. I can't see how, how, you know, someone's saying to me, I can't remember what he was saying the other day. I think it was, I think it might have been a Stephen Wilson interview where he was saying the guitar doesn't excite him and it's no longer relevant. It's like, well, you know, it, it is relevant because you can use it to generate sound. You I think use, you, can use, you can use any instrument to generate sound. You can process it any way you want. And yeah. If you, you know, I've got, I'm surrounded by guitar pedals here. And, <laughs> you know, I could, I could put a guitar through, through like a Mellotron sound. Yeah, yeah. So even like, and, and, and this tape, and this, and it come out, it sounds nothing like a guitar. Yeah, really no, that, that's what. I, yeah, I like. I think as well that so, those those kind of yeah, looking at the um, the I think the the more kind of traditional way of looking at a band as well. I think that maybe that's that's on the decline. That you know, I'm the bass player, so I only play bass. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think that, that that kind of thing now is 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 a little bit on the wane, and you've got you know bands that are a bit more nebulous you know in like how they present themselves and how they you know how they perform and all that kind of stuff which i th- i personally think is really exciting but the guitar definitely has a place in all that 100 percent. yeah i mean it's just the same thing but it's a really good sound generator and it's really expressive and you know I think, you can use a keyboard i mean you can it's, you can be expressive with a keyboard it's just when you've got the greatest facility on really yeah. isn't it? i think what it is is that the guitar more so maybe i'm biased i don't know but the guitar more so than everything is a symbol i think because when you know that whole explosion of like you know the the um the evolution of the teenager you know from like the late 40s 50s you know elvis all that kind of stuff the guitar was just attached to that you know yeah. so i, I mean, think that, like, that that's on the decline i think that as a, as a symbol of like you know rock and roll or mute you know whatever it is you know outsider i think that's definitely on the decline do you think i mean if you listen to like some of the pop music of the last 10 years there's been massive evolution in terms of modulation, arrangement, mm-hmm. um, juxtaposition, timbre, um, different stuff where people are using um, lots of different vocal effects. In form, form of pop music is different. So it tends to be verse, chorus, verse, chorus, going out the window. There might be melody one, repeated chords. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, what's the hook on um, that um, Billie Eilish song, um, Bad Guy? Yeah, is yeah. That- do, 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 do. it's not the vocal is it no exactly yeah, yeah yeah mumbled sort of background sort of thing and I, so the, you know this everything things have changed radically in pop music i think in terms i think pop music's really inspiring in terms of production at the moment um, i always i always get this you know um coming from a from, from a production point of view and like from an engineering point of view on my side uh, i watched a video the other day and a guy was sort of he was he wasn't sort of, he wasn't, you know, um, being down on it, but he, he, he was citing this study that had been done. They'd, they'd examined loads of songs from like, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and up into the 2000s. And, you know, just scientifically looking at them, you know, they were saying that the, the variation in timbres had 
had reduced the variation in dynamics had reduced all this kind of stuff i mean the dynamics thing the loudness war i think we are actually coming out the other side of that now mm -hmm. but a part of it is because in the 60s and 70s a lot of the equipment they were building was just what they'd got at the time and on it from a technical point of view for example like joe meek's recordings from a mm -hmm. technical point of view by you know like is this a good you know frequency you know all the rest of it they're not great you know but he was capturing magic well, and because because the music was so good the sounds that he has he attached to those have become like welded into our you know collective cultural kind of sense of nostalgia same with motown i always say this you know um uh or even studio kit i've said this before you know an 1176 compressor most people don't know what 1176 compressor is but they have heard it millions of times. Mm. So I've done it. I've done it before in a studio where I've played somebody a vocal and then I've put it through an 1176 compressor and I've asked them again, how does it sound now? And they say, oh, now it sounds like a record because you've been programmed to hear these sounds. And I think what's happening now is because of the advent of technology. Yeah, I think there is a, a slight homogenization to it, but the really clever people out there are, you know, that taking this technology and going way beyond mm. anything that was possible before, you know, and being really inventive with it. You know, if you're trying to use the technology as it was, you know, a, a, as a, as a direct replacement, which, you know, we're, we're, a, we're basically, you know, a, we're, we're kind of like a fairly traditional band in some senses, maybe we're, we're changing into something else, but yeah. You know, so um, yeah, yeah most of the records I had before so it all yeah be exactly but we're we're um you know uh we use a lot of the software in the way it would be used in the studio we use a compressor on the bass we use a compressor you know guitars eqs things like that but i think you know where the real inventions coming in now is is people using things for whatever they want mm. there's no there, there is no standard sound you can do whatever you want now and i i find that really exciting it's interesting that i mean like i say the in terms of in terms of harmony, I mean, there's not a lot, a great deal going on in pop music at the moment. But in terms of um, arrangement, and there's this, this really really amazing time in the different types of modulation and stuff. You know, I mean, there's a lot yeah. going on. But as as for the you know, does the guitar still have a place? I, I personally, I think that's a ridiculous thing to say. Mm, so do I. I, I think no. there's, it's, it's it's as relevant as any other sound generator because yeah. You can sample. You can sample a guitar. You can sample a clap. You can sample a eight oh eight. You can sample anything and process it in any way. Yeah, and it's all as relevant as each other. So you know, totally. There's the only, you know, there's the in the last ten years, there's been lots of one of the tricks is you know when people use the reverb tail without the sound itself. Yeah. So if you're you're, you're generating that reverb tail with a guitar that no one can possibly tell, it's different to a synthesizer. Yeah. It, which you say oh this one's not relevant because it's the guitar yeah it's exactly just, uh, it's ridiculous yeah, yeah. it's uh, totally ridiculous i i think uh, a lot of the time is we we've had this ourselves where we've become bored with the the physical you know act of like playing the instrument because it's you just become a bit stale you know mm -hmm. you go back to the same patterns and sometimes like then jumping onto a piano or keyboards or drums or something it kind of gives you something new i totally get that but you know, that's down to me as an individual. It's not down to the instrument. You know, what I, mean? yeah. <laughs> so, you well, know I think there's also something to be said to to use a different instrument in that um, it forces you to think differently. So yeah. I like, you know, I in terms of synthesizers, I don't need an analog synth. I don't. Again, I've already got. <laughs> an analog synth. I've, I've got. I've got two nice analog synths. I've got a lovely. I've got a Moog and a Dave Smith, but um, I don't need um, because I've got those and they respond in a certain way. Yeah. And I've, you know, laptop, we've got all those sounds of the laptop and I've got, you know, the Micro Freak has got a different interface that forces you to play in a different way. Yeah, I think totally. if I buy a new gear, I want it to, I'm trying to find a song from it. I'm not trying to create, because I've got all the sounds I want, basic mm. rock sounds. If I buy a piece of gear, I want it to inspire me to make a new record. Or to exactly. To move forward as a player. I'm not looking forward to things to get the, the perfect, you know, guitar tone because I've got yeah. a guitar sound that I've had, you know, I quite like. So I'm not looking to do that. What I'm looking to do is to create something that I haven't done before. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's, we, I mean, I think we've um, lived long enough now that we've lived through about 30 different proclamations of yeah, is the so, guitar yeah. dead? Is the guitar this? It's like saying, you know, is, is the violin dead? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I think people were saying the guitar was dead in the 80s, weren't they? Yeah. And then they were saying it. 
They were saying it when the Beatles were being signed. Yeah, you know. 962, wasn't it? They, they, um, which record company turned them down? I can't remember. It was, one of the Poly, was it Poly, no, Polydor? Was it Polydor who turned them down or Polydor who signed them? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. It was the ones that they, they are, I can't remember. But um, they um, said guitar groups are out because they've had the shadows already. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah. and, and I think, you know, yeah. And I think one the, the innovation, a lot of the innovation is coming from hip hop at the minute and, and R and B and contemporary pop. And there's, there's, if I think if I was a kid now, perhaps that probably what be what I was into, but um, it doesn't mean there's no place for guitars. Maybe there's, you know, I'm not particularly in using, interested in using the guitar as a nostalgic instrument. I mean, I'm, you know, I like, I liked like Led Zeppelin and Mogwai and stuff, but I like riffs. Yeah, I like riffs, but <laughs> I'm not interested in um, you know banging out uh, yeah. eight o'clock or anything. Like I, that. I'm just trying to just trying yeah. to make me. And I'm just and no, like, to be honest, when I'm writing, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just playing stuff and go, oh, that sounds alright. I'll share it to the lads. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I, it's just it just like I say, it just got locked so so much, you know. Yeah, it's a symbol. Melded something. into the cultural kind of psyche, didn't it? This is this fetishization. Can't even say it. Fetishization of of guitars and you know the guitar hero and you know the lead singer and the but, guitar. And the, and the interesting thing about the guitar as well. If you go onto TikTok mm. or go onto um, YouTube or Instagram, uh, look at the uh, and look at the guitar hashtags. The standard of playing, the age of the playing. There's more women involved. There's yeah. um, you know. It, it, things are getting better you know what i mean um, and, and, and these people are incredible i mean they stand up playing on you see these guitarists they're nuts yeah they're better than them by miles you know what i mean so i mean can you remember <laughs> we played um sev- a few years ago we played supporting the aristocrats at um yeah, heaven in yeah. london with uh, Gu- uh guthrie govern uh um, brian bella and marco miniman and yeah. i mean you tell me matt how old was the audience there um well there was a lot of youtube kids weren't there there was a lot of um kids same, same when you go to a John Gom gig, you get a lot of people who watch watch their aspirational guitarists who watch videos of guitarists and they go and see Guthrie Govan and you know Guthrie's I mean Guthrie's technically probably the best guitar player I've ever, I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, <laughs> he was terrifying. <laughs> he was, I mean, because he's worked out. I don't think he's, I think I think he's just worked out all the clever moves how right. to get around in clever ways because he's not like. He just he's a very smart player. Very yeah, he's a really smart. thoughtful guy. Yeah, yeah. Very, really like his playing. Um yeah. but yeah, so but yeah, I think that, I think there is still enthusiasm for the guitar. The guitar isn't dead. Go on to TikTok, go on to Instagram. I mean it's not necessarily my cup of tea musically, but there's tons of it. There's loads of really good players. Better yeah. more more high quality guitar players than there was when I was a kid. Just you know, do whatever inspires you. You know, if you if yeah. you get bored of guitar and you want to go and play synth for a while, do that. It just it doesn't matter. But yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't like when you get these kind of proclamations that the guitar is dead. I'm bored of the guitar. The guitar is over. It's like, well, not really, is it? I mean, there's always, you know, that's just it's just another sound generator. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a sound generator. It's an interface. Yeah, you know, a physical interface in that. You know, I'd, I'd like a modular synthesizer. I won't buy one because it'll, it'll cripple me financially. But um, <laughs> I would love it. I would love a modular synthesizer, and um, you know, it just makes you realise that it's just another way of looking at music. Yeah, you're controlling it. In, you know, different interfaces, whether it's six strings, twelve strings, seven strings, um, baritone, or a synthesizer, or a, a weird synthesizer that's like a ZX81, or just a knob on a thing where it's making a jux, you know, or exactly. a any all these things. And you know, I did that for a Mellotron. Mellotron. <laughs> Um, Bellatron. um, but yeah, so they're all just in- interfaces and sound generators, and they've all got an envelope, they can all be processed in different ways. And they've all, you know, there's, there's certain sounds like a Mellotron sound that triggers, you know, memories, great nostalgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, you, you get the, the cello sound or the, the flute sound, it's Beatles, isn't it? Exactly, or, you know, it, you know, it straight away, even people who, yeah, and but you, I can. I'm sure. Well, I can definitely bit crush a Mellotron, stick it through loads of reverb. Um, yeah, and it won't sound like, and stick it's it through new. Plug, and it won't sound like a Mellotron anymore. Exactly. And it's just how you process any instrument, whether it's a vocal, a guitar, anything. You know, what I mean, it's all the same. Are we Absolutely. done? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've I think we've sorted it. So there you go. Uh, guitars are um, oh. still relevant. Right, so thanks, Dave. <laughs> See thanks you later. Watching.